welcome to true projects in this video we are going to explain about the project title malaria disease cell classification with highlighting small infected regions before diving into the execution let me give you an overview of the project let us first understand what malaria is malaria is a serious sickness caused by tiny parasites spread by mosquito bites the most common ones that affect people are called plasmodium falciparum and plasmodium vivax symptoms like fever headaches and feeling very cold start about 10 to 15 days after getting bitten by an infected mosquito if not treated quickly malaria can make you very sick or even cause death traditional methods for diagnosing malaria involve microscopic where trained technicians examine blood samples under a microscope a process that demands skill and time rapid diagnostic tests rdts offer quick results but can lack accuracy polymerase chain reaction pcr is highly precise but costly and not feasible for routine use in areas with limited resources Each method has advantages and drawbacks influencing its suitability for different settings. To overcome these limitations the proposed system utilizes various deep learning models including model S and model M simple and complex CNNs ResNet MobileNet and Exception for malaria disease cell classification. The workflow includes preprocessing feature extraction classification and highlighting of infected regions to improve diagnostic accuracy the project provides automated malaria diagnosis for healthcare providers ensuring accuracy and efficiency patients benefit from timely treatment while public health systems gain enhanced disease surveillance researchers can conduct more efficient studies ultimately the project aims to improve malaria control and save lives the integration of flask enables the creation of web based interface for the project this interface allows users to interact with the malaria diagnosis system by uploading images and receiving analysis result in real time to implement this project we need software and hardware requirements software requirements of the project are application is anaconda primary language is python front end framework is flask back end framework is jupyter notebook database is sqlite 3 front end technologies used in the project are html css javascript and bootstrap 4 hardware requirements of the project are operating system of windows processor of i5 and above ram of 8 8gb and above hard disk of 25gb and above algorithms used these are the algorithms built in the project which are model s that is simple cnn model m that is complex cnn resnet mobile net and exception we have built all these algorithms to compare the performance with different evaluation metrics like accuracy precision recall and fn score and here the exception model outperformed the other models and that is the reason we have deployed it in the front end now let us execute the project to execute this project first we need to open the code folder which contains the project source code files So here, this is the dataset folder. In this dataset folder, we are again having two folders named as infected and uninfected. In the infected folder, we have the infected red blood cell images, and all these images are used to train the model. And in the uninfected folder, we have the non-infected red blood cell images. So these images are crucial for training the models. to distinguish between malaria infected cells and healthy cells and here this is the sample folder in which we have the test cases which we will use during the execution and here this is the segmented folder so this is the data set folder only so even in this folder we are having the two folders named as infected and uninfected in the infected folder we have the infected red blood cell images and in the uninfected folder we have the non infected rbc images and all the images present in the segmented folder are used to train the model 
This is the static folder. This folder consists of files related to CSS, JavaScript, and Bootstrap. This is the templates folder. This folder contains all the HTML pages used in the project. It typically includes files like index.html, about.html, and more, which represent different pages of the website. This is app.py file. This .py file contains the information related to front-end logic. It includes code written in Python that handles server-side operations such as processing user requests, interacting with the database, and generating dynamic content to be rendered in the HTML templates. And here, this is the model folder, which contains algorithm information which will be loaded into the project code during runtime. And here, these are notebook.ipyng files. These are Jupyter notebook files, which contains a combination of code, graphs, and outputs all in one place. It allows users to write and execute code in individual cells, making it a popular choice for data science. And here, this is signup.db file. This file is the database file used to store user information. First, we need to copy the path of the code folder from the address bar of the file explorer. So here, I'm copying the path. Now open the Anaconda prompt. Use the cd command followed by a space and paste the copied path and hit enter. This command is used to change the current directory to the code folders path. Now compile the app.py file using the command python space app.py and hit enter. This command will execute the Python script and perform a runtime check for any syntax errors or logical issues. After running the app.py file, the Flask framework will host the application locally at the default address, localhost, which is this, and port, which is this. Now copy this local link provided by the Flask framework. I'm copying the link and paste this copied link into any web browser. I usually prefer Google Chrome and hit enter. The home page of the project is displayed in the browser. This is the front end built using Flask framework. If we are new users, we need to register first. So click on register link here. So here we need to enter all these details to register. But I have already registered, so click on login button here. So here we need to enter the username and the password, which are static, and then click on login button. We have logged in successfully and we are redirected to the prediction page. So here we need to upload the RBC images. And after uploading the images, the application will predict whether it is infected or not. Now click on choose file. So here from the test cases, I'm selecting the second image. Now click on open. So here we can see that the image is loaded. Now click on upload button. So here we can see the result that is uninfected. It means that it is a healthy cell. Now click on try again. Let us upload some more images. I'm selecting this image. Now click on upload button. So here we can see the result that is infected. So it is a infected malaria cell. Let us upload some more images. I'm selecting this image. Now click on upload button. So here we can see the result that is uninfected. It means it is a healthy cell and it is not infected with malaria. Now let us upload some more images. Click on choose file. I'm selecting the 15th image. Now click on upload button. So here we can see the result that is infected. It means that the person is having malaria, infected with malaria. Now let us upload some more images. Click on choose file. Let us upload the images from the data set from the infected folder. I'm selecting this image. Now click on upload button. So here we can see the result that is infected. Let us upload some more images. Click on choose file. So from the data set itself, from the uninfected, 
I'm selecting this image. Now click on open. Now click on upload button. So here we can see the result that is uninfected. It means that the person is not having malaria. In this way, just by uploading the images, we can predict whether the person is having malaria or not, whether the person is infected with malaria or not. Now click on graphs link here. So here we can see different classes without extraction. So here these are the different classes. And here we have the comparison of models. So here the blue color represents accuracy, orange represents recall, green represents precision, red represents F and score, purple represents specificity and brown color represents sensitivity. So here on the X axis, we have the model's name and on the Y axis, we have the scores for the different evaluation metrics. So the model which is performing best will be used for prediction. And here we have the individual comparison graphs for all the evaluation metrics. So here we can see this is the accuracy comparison graph. This is the recall comparison graph. This is the precision comparison graph. And here we have the FN comparison graph. And here we have the width extraction, different classes. So here we can see the different classes. And again, we have the comparison of models for all the three data sets. So the algorithm which is performing best will be used for prediction. Now click on logout link here. In this project, we developed a system to classify malaria infected and non-infected cells using various algorithms with the exception model achieving the highest accuracy and efficiency. Detecting malaria is crucial for timely treatment, preventing severe illness, reducing disease spread and improving health outcomes. Accurate diagnosis aids in efficient resource allocation outbreak control and supports malaria eradication efforts thank you for watching video for more projects please visit our website www.trueprojects.in for updates on latest project videos please visit true projects youtube channel and subscribe